Hello, uh, my name is Johan. I'm speaking here to uh, my friend and colleague in, in America. Her name is Candice. And uh, we both practice a style of, of Hatha Yoga that is uh, on the more gentle side. And uh, the title or the idea that what we be talking about, and I'll be asking Candice some questions about this, is really what is the benefits of this gentle yoga? Why do we do a gentle yoga? Um, should we do it on its own? How does it work? What makes it different from other kinds of yogas? So, Candice, why would we want to do gentle yoga? So, when I'm asked this question, the best way for me to explain this is if we look at, for example, yeah. I got really, I'm really sore, I did yoga, which we should never hear from clients. You should be feeling better from yoga. So the benefits and why I encourage people to, to do gentle yoga, first of all, you're going to feel good. You're going to become more aware of your body and you're going to be able to gently start to maybe heal injuries, release tension, and most importantly, enjoy your yoga practice. So you, you feel that the, that the gentle yoga isn't uh, a specific kind of yoga, but more the approach that you do the kind of yoga? Or is it also a specific type of yoga? Like it's not Bikram yoga or it is, uh, what, is, there, is there a name? Is this is like a certain kind of yoga? I would say it's more the pace than a specific style. So for me, because I love Hatha yoga and what Hatha yoga has done for me and my life and my practice, I take the Hatha Yoga concept and I keep it very beginner, beginner friendly. So it's not necessarily you're going to come there and say, this was so easy, I felt like I did nothing, but it's the pace that you're doing it. So if there's a teacher that really enjoys vinyasa, they could still do gentle yoga. It's just taking those postures, it's slowing it way down and maybe encouraging longer breath in each posture, for example. Okay, so the, the, the question um, and the feeling that I sometimes uh, get when um, people ask what kind of yoga it is, and I say it's a gentle yoga, is that they tend to become instantly skeptical uh, that it's going to be too easy, mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they'll be bored, or they won't actually get a decent result. Right. And uh, that is a tough one to, to crack because it's a myth that you have to work harder to get a better result. Okay. Um, at the same time, it's uh, entirely true that if you don't make a certain amount of effort, that you're actually not going to get anything done either. Um, how do you uh, um, encourage that understanding? So, so, so just to say this, my feeling is that the only way to experience something is mm -hmm. to actually experience it. Um, so if it resonates with one, then when we try it out. If it doesn't, it doesn't, and you simply just won't find yourself there. Right. Um, uh, what is your um, approach? Because you, can't really, you can say it's yin yoga, meaning it's restorative. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it gives energy, it doesn't take your energy. That's, that's, one, right. that's one way of, of, of explaining it. Um, give me some thoughts on that from your side. So I've actually had that question. I've had clients ask me when they see gentle yoga on the schedule and they see my name, they come and ask me, is gentle yoga, is that yin? Are you doing restorative? And I tell them it has a restorative aspect to it with the gentle yoga, but it's going to allow you to go at a pace that makes sense for you where you're at. So if we're, for example, in a gentle yoga class, I'll generally skip chaturangas. So I will go from a plank into a downward facing dog. Um, if it wasn't gentle yoga, I might go from that high plank through chaturanga to an up dog to a down dog. So right. anybody in the class, they, they could always modify that. Mm -hmm. But for, for me, it's got the restorative element to it for sure, because you're going mm -hmm. to feel really good after your gentle yoga practice. But I would say it's got the aspect of moving through postures at a gentle, slow manageable pace and that's why i say it's yoga for everybody anybody can do it yeah 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 so it's uh, there's a there's an accessibility yes um there's an accessibility to it um yes. yeah yeah so the 
uh, the the attractive, or what did I would say in the beginning, the the idea, uh, why would we want to do a gentle yoga? Um, mm -hmm. One would be accessibility, the fact that uh, you, you can one can do it with with uh, limited um, physical ability. Yes. Um, also, uh, the restorative aspect is is um, is I would say the magical aspect of it. Um, yes. Because when we feel restored, we feel we feel better. So our sense of well-being is actually tied into this not having overexerted ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. There's another question I have for you, which is um, which is very pertinent for me as a as a yoga practitioner, is to get away from my own competitiveness, and then also to be able to share some of that with others. So while we do to a degree, it's debatable to have something called healthy competition, uh, where mm -hmm. we feel we want to do better in uh, on some level, maybe even um, compare ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, the 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 um, the basic bottom line truth of yoga is really that it's, it's a journey that we take at our own specific pace, right. according to how we are in life, and it can't be a competition. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and and mm -hmm. if, you, if you like the concept of the yin yoga, the idea is basically that instead of just uh, giving energy off or out, you actually reverse the pr process. And yin yoga automatically then has an element of relaxedness about it because mm -hmm. it has to be like that. Um, yeah, so so deep relaxation would be a, a vital aspect of this kind of yoga, right? It would. And something that I voice a lot when, when referring to gentle yoga is the reducing stress. And a lot of people come in there and whether they're coming from work for a noon class, whether they're doing a private lesson, whether it's eight o'clock in the morning, they, they have that hour to focus on themselves, on their mat, to do it at their own pace that's realistic for them wherever they are in their practice mm -hmm. and remove that stress. Learn how to breathe deep because you're not worried, oh, I can't do all the postures. Oh, I'm not flexible. Mm -hmm. The postures are at a pace that's manageable. You can modify them. And you're, you're allowed to be more focused on the breath as mm -hmm. opposed to trying to maybe keep up in a class that's not necessarily suited for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, what even happens in, in, in this kind of yoga, um, it has a kind of a trance-like quality to it, but yes. not because, you, because you're moving like a robot, it's, it's because you're actually going into a certain right. uh, space. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say, I, I want to, I'm asking you this question, I would say that it's, um, that it's not necessarily for everyone, although everyone could benefit from it. Mm -hmm. um, but to typecast some people, you could say some people just won't resonate with it. Um, it's it's you know it's not their thing. Yeah. Um, and, sure. and if it is, if it isn't, it isn't. Um, however, uh, this is where I want to ask your your comment on is that at some point um, in a person's life, sooner or later, uh, something breaks down, like or everything. <laughs> uh, you know, like. Uh, physically oneself, either right. from a, age or accidents or or some, or, or some related uh, illness. Injury, right. Injury, yeah. And then um, it's just out of the question to do fast or to do things mm -hmm. fast. So if you had a stroke, then you're not doing Ashtanga yoga a week after the stroke. No. Um, <laughs> and uh, that situation will force you into a reappraisal of how slow can I actually go? Mm -hmm. uh, and be okay with it, and um, yeah, uh, give me some 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 things um, uh, in your experience or some thoughts around. Um, sooner or later, we're going to get forced to slowness, and it's maybe a good idea to embrace it. While yeah, we can. and sometimes the body will naturally nudge you that way. Um, so I had a client recently join; she's been with me about three weeks now, and. She said, I was going to yoga with some girlfriends. I was doing it once, twice a week. And my ribs really hurt afterwards. And my back was really sore afterwards. And she wasn't expressing anything positive from her experience. 
And since doing gentle yoga, she said she started doing it on her own in the mornings for like 20 minutes when she wakes up because she cannot believe how good she feels. And it's actually helping her ribs because she's more focused on the breath, as I said previously, than trying to keep up with the class, for example. Yes. So it's really suited. It's well suited to, I think, to everybody because anyone can modify. But especially if you've either dealt with an injury or you've maybe neglected your stretching and your exercise and you've been yes. doing a lot of driving, a lot of sitting at a desk and you know, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, and a few months maybe go by and you haven't actually stretched and allowed your body to move. Yeah. Yeah. Gentle yoga will be so, so beneficial for that. And you're going to want to keep coming back because you're just going to start to feel good, good energy, breath, and moving the body. Yeah, so uh, the, the question I wanted to, to ask um, in terms of uh, what are we marketing here or what are we, what are we promoting? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, I don't mean in any kind of a cynical or commercial um, um, comment, but um, for me, uh, I've always been drawn to the gentle yoga because uh, I, I feel that uh, um, even when I was much younger and able to do uh, uh, other kind of yoga, I felt that um the, the harshness or the fastness of of the mm -hmm. world um uh doesn't suit me and um, right. i'm sure uh, i'm not the only person like that no um, so this is a more sensitive soul type of practice yes um yes. and also um from the sensitive soul type of uh perspective as well is i look around myself um, and have been doing so since I can remember. And I, see, I just see a bunch of people that are suffering mm -hmm. on, some, on some level because they're, mm -hmm. not able, they're, they're, they're not able in their bodies. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't want to put a, 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 a number to it or a percentage, but like mm -hmm. probably half of, half of the people that you see around actually can't go to a yoga class. Um, right. They, 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 they won't deal with an Ashtanga class or a Bikram class or no. something like that. No. Um, um, and then the ones that that are prepared to deal with it often actually has an underlying or hidden problem or injury or something. Yeah. Uh, so from my yoga training and and what how I understand yoga is we 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 want to realign and uh, you know kind of make sense of our lives and physically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then step up the training. So you know so with the exception of a few natural athletes people aren't naturally that athletic or that yogic like right so it actually makes like next to zero sense for me that we would even enter into a high level of competitive yoga when we actually no. don't have the ability to compete in the first place right uh, or we compete but at our at the cost of our of our long-term sustainable health basically mm -hmm. yeah so that's my my big kind of take on it really well i also feel that there there is a lot of yoga available, which is fantastic. It's really, really beautiful to see. It's it's great. There is a style out there that if you want to go and do hot yoga, you can. If you want to do vinyasa, you can. If you want to do ashtanga, there's there's a lot of yoga available, and but there's not necessarily always gentle beginner yoga, yoga for everyone available if you look at a studio schedule. So I think it's important that, you know, teachers look at that. And, and that is why the feedback I get is so positive And it, it makes me really happy because, they, oh, we love this yoga that you're teaching. You know, we, we feel so mm. good. And afterwards, people come up to me, mm. thank you. I feel so good. So there's a need mm. for it. And it's resonating with people who never even saw themselves rolling out a mat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we talk about uh, the benefit of gentle yoga, then uh, we are discussing some uh, level of, of general lifestyle approach. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you, you know, what I have noticed is that a lot of people who do competitive sport are also people that are quite competitive, for instance. Right. And I, I, I'm not judging it or, or, or saying that it's incorrect. 
but no. too fast too fast things like fast recreation and 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 fast living mm -hmm. uh, it makes for a powerful like spectacular life for instance you know i mean right. and some people can deal with that you know they're like high flyers and they like they mm -hmm. look amazing and they just do amazing things mm -hmm. but then i don't want to include anyone else but uh, in my <laughs> uh, uh, um, sort of um, sense of who i am but then there's the rest ordinary people so I think sometimes of this sort of gentle yoga is something for ordinary people. Yes. Um, and not the exceptional person that uh, like, like is that kind of person I described or the kind of person that, that just has this natural ability to, you know, be bendy or so, something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's not about the gymnastics or how flexible are you? Because a lot of people say, and you've heard this and I've heard this, people say, I can't come to yoga class because I can't touch my toes. I can't come to yoga class because I'm not flexible. Yeah, yeah. And that's what gentle yoga it will change their perspective on that. You don't need to be flexible to yeah. do it. It's going to help you to get flexible in a realistic way and not about being a gymnast. It's going to get you flexible where you're going to feel good. You're not going to feel lethargic. You're going to have energy. So, so there are these two aspects to to the gentle yoga and the one is the, the the physically being soft on your body right um and then the other aspect of uh, like being gentle with yourself in other words so mm -hmm. not beating yourself up because you because you can't do something more spectacular right. for instance um i find i think there's a disconnect as well as a difficulty in the in the in in the that the promise of yoga or the benefit of yoga versus the mm -hmm. reality that most people feel that they can't actually do yoga. Mm -hmm. And uh, like for a long time um, when I was doing yoga uh, years ago and I was promoting my yoga and I was doing it as a, as like, I want to go out and really make a difference and, you know, convert mm -hmm. the world to yoga. Um, yeah. I, I felt that there was actually this real problem with, with the image of yoga where, um, it, it was literally promoting a, a situation that most people can't get into. Like exactly. In, in the yeah. sense of the level of the practice. And I thought yoga was its own worst en enemy. Um, it simply is unattainable for most people. Mm -hmm. And um, that's on one level. And then on, on uh, you know, in terms of the, um, the visual aspect of how people promote yoga or to often do. And then there's the other aspect of, um, of simply, uh, people not being able to understand that gentle yoga means I'm going to maybe go to one class this week and I can't make it next week. Uh, but it's okay because maybe the week after that I can go three times or twice. That's, exactly. That's yeah. like make, making it work for you mm -hmm. rather than, and rather than not doing it at all because, because yeah. you can't, you can't have this practice where somebody said that, you know, if you don't practice with discipline like five times a week, then rather just leave it, you know, because they're yeah. really, you know, or, or, or that you won't get anything right. Um, in, you know, it, it won't work. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. Um, it's simply not like that. Not at all. Not at all. So how many times would a person need to practice gentle yoga? Well, it depends what they're trying to achieve. If it's somebody who's who's finding an ongoing issue, let's say it's pain in the shoulders, neck and back, I would recommend two to three times a week. And it doesn't have to be going to a class. You could do one or two classes. You could do 20, 30 minutes at home on your own, on a YouTube video, or just take what you've learned from your class and take it home with you. Um, but I think twice a week is is a good goal to have if that's not possible and you can only come once a week that's better than not doing yoga so if you can make it to a gentle yoga class every week but i promise you most people i would say more than 80 percent of people who start doing this sort of yoga a gentle yoga practice they start with one they start feeling so good they want to come back i have people who come on a friday at noon and then they're back at 9 30 on a saturday morning yeah. Because it just feels so good. They want to come back and do another session. Yeah, yeah. Um, before I forget what I wanted to say there, uh, my, um, 
my sense is that uh, when people come to the class on the Friday, they and their body asks for the Saturday that they that they mm-hmm. want to have a repeat experience. Mm-hmm. Um, in other words, it's not like they wake up Saturday and they go like, it's like a hangover, and now yeah. you've got to, you know, no. um, you feel awful. It's, um, uh-huh. I mean, it happens when you exercise a lot and you're not used to exercising a lot, and the next day right. you like can't walk. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, if you keep on exercising a lot, then after a while you can walk the next day. Um, yes. Uh, the, the the phenomenal thing about uh, about this kind of yoga for me in my personal practice and and um, how I feel is that uh, if I do a class tonight, then I just feel fine the next day, but fine in a way that I wouldn't f- have felt if I didn't do this yesterday. Yes. And mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> and it is so obvious that uh, that you're not feeling that nice and feeling if you don't actually do the the practice yes so in other words there's like there's never a dip or a negative there's only the lift and then the kind of return mm-hmm. to to the, the ordinary place um mm-hmm. and uh, i've certainly seen in my years that um it's not like no one's ever harmed themselves in some way but the injury or accident rate is like it's it's so small that it doesn't even really add up to like any significant number. Right. Um, you know, apart from a person having in some way or the other put something out or like overdone some practice, mm-hmm. um, which I would say is like so small that um, it, it's, not, it's not great um, that it can happen, but it's quite unlikely that you can even pull a muscle in this kind of yoga. However, the, the, the point that I asked about so that we can um, have some clarity on this is um, I call it effortless effort, which is a little bit zen for some people because it doesn't make sense yeah. on some level. But you're making the effort to be effortless and you have to make quite a fair amount of effort to get a great result. So we touched on it in the beginning when I asked uh, what kind of, can we actually get stronger and fitter Yes. Uh, from, from this? And why would, why would that be? What would the benefit be? Why, why would that happen? Why would, what would the benefit of, of, of relaxed yoga or gentle yoga be for your health so that you can actually get fitter and stronger from it? How does it work? So I've, I've seen that when I have my gentle yoga class, let's say people are, are rushing from work or, you know, they've just driven there in traffic, whatever the case might be, they literally look like transformed after one hour. And it's not me doing it. It's it, they're doing it. They always say, oh, thank you. You did this. I said, no, you did this. You took the time to roll out your mat and practice self-love and invest in your health. So by slowing down, and you're still doing the asana movement, but you've got a deep focus on the breath. You've got the mind, body, spirit balance and aspect, which is essentially what we want from our yoga practice. Mm. So when we've got a clear, calm mind, we focused on the breath. When we're moving our bodies at a pace that is good, it's, it's sustainable. It makes sense. It feels good. Mm-hmm. And also connecting to spirits. And not everybody who comes to yoga wants to be involved in that spiritual practice, but it does speak to them on some level. So you've got the mind, mm-hmm. the body, and the spirit. And it's mm-hmm. at a pace of that awareness versus trying to move into a difficult posture in, in an advanced class. And again, I'm not taking any value away from more advanced yoga because that will speak to somebody when mm-hmm. that's where they're at in their practice. But as we said, for the general person who's not a serious athlete, who just wants to move and breathe and feel good, your health is going to improve. And it's going to be at a pace that's sustainable. It's doable. And it's realistic for people. And I love the expression, if you do yoga once a week, you know, it'll change your body. If you do yoga twice a week, it'll change your mind. And if you do it three times or more, it'll change your life because you start to just feel different. You Mm. crave healthy food you just it just does it resonates with you and mm. it it is so beneficial for your overall health 
Yeah, that's that's uh, that sounds attractive. Uh, attractive indeed. Um, as I say, uh, different things resonate with different people. Absolutely. Um, my, yeah. my sense is that um, that the uh, the common sense of of a gentle yoga means not only that you're learning about kindness, but that you're also not literally hammering at your body. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I think we've said it in in different ways, but. Um, I've certainly learned through my own practice that um, I actually get a, 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 a more relaxed uh, feeling about how I use my body mm -hmm. now, than, uh, now than when I was younger. Yes. Um, and there is a, um, a, a, sure, a proportion to skill, like the, when we get better at something, we can do it better. But mm -hmm. the difference for me is a sense that over the years I've changed how I view uh, an endeavor and I've become more relaxed about that and that gives me a better result. Yeah. So um, I would say that my yoga feels, feels, um, mm -hmm. it doesn't look, doesn't look better, um, but feels like twice as, as uh, perfect than it felt uh, 20 years ago. Yes, um, uh, I agree. I feel the same. Uh, and the real se it's a real sense of well-being, and it's, it's mm -hmm. a very physical, mental, emotional, spiritual well-being. Mm -hmm. And um, so if, if for, speaking for myself, if you prepared to uh, make the effort to, to, to go down that path, then a gentle yoga um, can only serve us so well right um so yeah it's it's definitely um if, if gentle yoga sounds like something that that you would do uh we're doing a podcast i'm in cape town you're in uh, somewhere where are you at the moment i'm in ormond beach florida united states uh, and you and you travel around so this podcast is also for um for anyone who wants to learn about gentle yoga as a teacher mm -hmm. or as a as a practitioner yes um so we're promoting essentially what we do but not necessarily at our own places or studios but more like mm -hmm. a, kind of a, a way of sharing um to others who may be interested um, yes. how would you describe um, a person, how, where would they find this kind of a yoga? I don't think that you can really just type into the internet gentle yoga class. In, you know, I had somebody in, that did Google gentle yoga and they found me um, because oh, right. I described Hatha yoga as a gentle approach. So somebody actually did put gentle yoga. Oh, um, wow. But if you're looking for it, I would look for, look for other keywords like beginner. Um, you yeah. could speak to teachers who teach Hatha yoga and yin yoga and restorative and ask them if they're yeah. offering any kind of gentle flow is another word that a lot of teachers use. Yes. Um, so as soon as I find it moving more towards intermediate, it will say mixed levels flow. Um, mm -hmm. If somebody's new to yoga or they want something that is more on the slower side, I would look for words that, you know, beginner flow mm -hmm. um, and speak to teachers that teach the styles that I mentioned, Hatha yoga, yin yoga, yeah. restorative. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, what I used to say um, to, to people, they would, um, they would send an inquiry and they'd go like, oh, I see you do yoga, you know, mm -hmm. and ask them what kind of yoga would you, are you looking for? Then they said, oh, my f you were recommended because apparently you do like a gentle yoga. So you are great. Yeah. Um, but uh, my mind, uh, point of view has always been um, in my mind that when you go to a new town and you want to explore yoga, or if you've never done yoga, mm -hmm. then um, surely you ask around. Yes. And like, uh, is there anyone in this town that does like a kind of a slow yoga for old people or for somebody yeah. like me, a hip replacement or whatever the case is? Yeah. And then everyone knows there's like such a person, you know? Yeah. And um, I've often seen, um, now I see there are more younger people that, that teaches a gentle yoga as well. But mm -hmm. often it used to be a, a little old lady somewhere. That right. Yeah. Like an old-fashioned style of yoga. Although, yeah. I mean, 
you get some some older people that teaches like really like amazing stuff that I don't mm-hmm. even I would be too embarrassed to go to these classes, you know, because <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, if somebody's new to an area, I would speak to the local gyms and just phone a lot of studios. I know there weren't a lot of classes available in 2020, but that's slowly changing. If people are not into no. doing the online space, it's slowly starting to change now where there's outdoor classes available or classes in studio with limited space. Mm-hmm. So just speak mm-hmm. to your local gyms, go onto Facebook, look at Facebook groups, you know, ask it around at your local mm-hmm. health shops mm-hmm. and things like that. And you will, mm-hmm. you will find the teacher that, that you need because when the student mm. is ready the teacher will appear yeah so for sure and one of the um the most important uh, aspects that i've seen with with if you want to try yoga is that uh yeah there is that beautiful idea that the the right person will just like appear um but sometimes it's um i mean it happens for sure yeah but sometimes yes. it's also a case if you try something and it doesn't work or you didn't like it um usually to be honest uh you probably weren't tuned in properly which mm-hmm. is kind of what we, what you were saying so when we tuned in we tend to find the right thing but sometimes we just do something or we you know we kind of made like almost a bad choice or something then it's really important not to write off yes. what we're talking about you know so if somebody yeah. comes to my classes and i can see they didn't like it you know then i don't go like you know, now you'll never be able to do yoga or something. You know, you go like, right. You're really bored, you know. So why don't you like go to someone else and like give it mm-hmm. a go? You know, like, I can yeah. recommend you to you, are you, or let me know if you want a recommendation or something like that. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's that sort of um, ambassador to yoga. Mm-hmm. Um, you, uh, we, we're meant to be a community of uh, practitioners that actually refers people on to the most uh, appropriate practitioner, basically. Right. Um, and, uh, and try a few different uh, teachers because every teacher has a different style and a different voice. So don't base it on your first experience if it's not like you just said. If it's not for you, try a few other teachers. You will find the teacher that resonates with you, that makes you want to come back. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it would be good if we um, – conclude a little maybe if you want to have a summary you're welcome but um, my uh, last comment uh, would be that make no mistake that when you master or when you're adept at um, at at a fairly gentle style of yoga um, Mm -hmm. it can be very very powerful and effective so obviously if you want to learn a technique it's going to take a while to get it right but when you and I was saying it inadvertently when you get um, comfortable with uh, practicing a relaxed yoga, mm-hmm. uh, you, you will not, you will create something that's far more sustainable in the practice. Absolutely, than almost anything else. You'll be able to do it for longer, um, but also something that you're honing a very subtle quality that not only heals you, makes you feel good and healthy, but it actually strengthens your system to the core. Mm-hmm. In in every in every possible way as far as yoga does and um so a gentle yoga uh can actually produce uh so to speak uh, like a really strong person or a fit person i know that i know that for a fact yeah well i encourage everybody to try take a gentle yoga class because it is powerful it is magical you are going to feel good you are going to want to keep coming back and it's just going to inspire you to take those next steps on your health journey. That sounds excellent. <laughs> Thanks, Candice, for Thank talking you, to hun. me. If somebody wants to get a hold of you, can you give us your uh, details? Yes, you can follow me on Instagram. The handle is yoga underscore health underscore Candice. And my YouTube channel is Yoga and Health with Candice. We can link those links below. And Facebook, also Yoga and Health with Candice. And I'm Johan Kotze, and I'm at johankotze.com. Thank you very much for listening.